So hi everyone, I'm really excited to be here. It's actually the first time after a year and a half that I see people face to face, not through the Zoom, so that's really cool. I hope you'll find this uh, session interesting and relevant for you. Um, and during the next 45 minutes, I'm going to speak about how to architect uh, a home care medical IoT uh, cloud system. Uh, to be honest, it's not necessarily need to be uh, home care. It can be any medical IoT cloud platform um, that you are architecting. Okay, so uh, before we start getting into the details, a few words about BioT. BioT is a cloud-based solution, a SaaS platform that enables to take any medical device and transform it into a connected care solution. We do that by providing software that covers both the cloud itself uh, and uh, different components that are set, sitting on the outskirts, uh, like in the uh, medical device itself or in the uh, gateway of the medical device. It can be a phone. We'll give some examples later on. And of course, the different portals, like the manufacturer portal, which is the portal that the medical device company is using, and the uh, clinician portal, which is the one that for the caregivers uh, to operate and uh, read the data coming from the medical devices. And within the cloud, we have different processes that are running, like uh, device management, device monitoring, patient engagement, and so on. OK. So for the agenda today, we are going to showcase, I'm going to showcase you a live demo uh, of uh, how we connect a medical device into the cloud and from there uh, to the caregiver uh, portal. Uh, then we'll talk about the challenges in architecting a medical IT, IoT solution uh, for home care how we overcome uh, our architectural dilemmas and barriers, mainly focusing on the physical connectivity part, not on all of the barriers, of course, uh, and eventually uh, showcasing an infrastructure of a quick and uh, secure IOMT solution. So let's start with uh, a demo. And, and, and let's think about uh, uh, a use case where you have either a patient at his home that needs to get treated, a chronic patient, or you have a, a care facility for elderly care that you want to monitor uh, uh, elderly people. Basically, you have several ways to do it with medical devices. There are many sensors and many devices in the market that you can actually connect. And here I brought uh, with me uh, two that I will uh, showcase. So one example is a stationary device. This device basically works uh, on uh, radio frequencies, a radar. It sends signals, radio signals to the patient, and then uh, based on the received uh, feedback, it knows how to identify uh, 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 respiration rate and uh, uh, different parameters that I'll show you later on. Um, and this is normally used uh, beneath the bed of the patient or above it, or you know, it can be also in, in, a, in a sofa. So you can put it in different place, places. It's being uh, charged uh, from a standard 5-volt uh, uh, USB charger. So that's the uh, way to connect it. And it sends the data uh, through wireless Wi-Fi. So that's one example. Uh, and from wireless Wi-Fi, they're directly, of course, to the cloud. And the second example is this watch, which is a standard wearable uh, that knows how to measure my uh, beat rates. Uh, heartbeat rates and uh, uh, oxygen level. And this normally is, is wear on my wrist. And then once I'm using those type of devices, and we'll talk about it later on as well, uh, normally the connectivity to the cloud is not uh, done directly. It's using BLE, Bluetooth Slow Energy, to be connected to a gateway. When, and the gateway normally is the mobile phone. And then the mobile phone sends it to the cloud. So these are the major two uh, uh, options. Uh, pros and cons we will uh, see later on, but in this case, when it's a wearable, you are not limited in physical locations. You can go anywhere uh, outside the room. Uh, with this type of device, you are uh, limited, of course, to a physical location, a proximity, but here you don't need to configure anything. Here, for elderly people, uh, especially configuring the application, making sure it's running on the mobile phone is something that they need to do, and it's not always easy. So when architecting an IoT solution for medical devices, we will talk about it later on, that these are the dilemmas that you will need to face and, and decide which type of solution to choose if it's going through BLE uh, and uh, through a gateway or directly connected uh, with the different pros and cons. So let's start with a demo. I hope it will work. Uh, this is just to connect uh, the, the power to the device. And once I do that, I'll also open my... Uh, hotspot, so it will work as a Wi-Fi hotspot. 
and basically um, this device will connect to the hotspot over here and will send the data to the cloud. It can be any hotspot also the one that exists over here. And let me just switch to the application. So what you see here is the login screen. I'll log into the application itself. What you can see over here is different devices that are connected or are defined in the system. Uh, you can see the devices and monitor persons. In this case, I'll choose uh, the device that I'm using here, which is uh, Elad Home, and ask to monitor it. And then it's checking the device status. It will try to connect to the device. And if everything is OK, it will say it, it won't say anything. It will just connect. And then I'm just choosing the patient that I want now to monitor and start the monitoring session. And basically, what's going on right now, that this device is sending um, the uh, radar uh, to my body. It will get back the readings. And from that, it will extract the, the, the raw data. The raw data will be sent directly to the cloud. It won't be processed here. And we talked, the previous lecture was on uh, edge computing. So here, the idea is to use as, as, as simple as possible device, which should also be very cheap. We'll send the data to the cloud, and all the processing will be done in the cloud. The way that it is being done, this device is sending uh, um, packets in an MQTT protocol. It's the one that sends telemetry data, developed by uh, IBM in the 90s. And in the cloud, there is a, 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 a receiver that listens to the um, data that is coming and knows how to publish it to different listeners that are waiting for the data. So one of the listeners is my web application. And now what you can see over here, that I have a, a bit rate of uh, 73 bits, heart rate of uh, 73 per, sec, per minute, respiration rate of uh, 17 times per minute, and uh, the uh, ratio between the respiration rate, uh, inhale and exhale, plus uh, other parameter that uh, says how good the quality of my uh, breathing is. And, and actually, it's quite worse right now because it should be five is the best and one is worse. It's probably because I'm talking and I'm a bit excited, so that's uh, why you see it like that. So basically, you saw here a very straightforward, intuitive, easy to use uh, a connected device uh, demo. Uh, and, and I just plugged it, plugged it into the, to the, to the network, to the, to the power. I didn't even configure anything. Immediately send, start sending data. I just logged into the system, and I can now monitor the data. I can, of course, stop monitoring the data, and then basically go to the different patients that I'm uh, viewing and seeing all the different readings of those patients throughout the time that they were actually measured. So basically, very straightforward. Uh, you can see here two things that actually happened in parallel in the cloud environment. One for the real-time data delivery. There was a publisher that sent the data from this device to the cloud. There was a listener there, uh, that uh, uh, a, a gateway that actually distributed it to the relevant uh, listeners on the other side. And that was done in real time. And in parallel, the data was also saved into the cloud storage and was processed for further uh, uh, analysis later on. So this was the first demo uh, to show you. And I'm happy that it worked and no, no problems. So um, let's go back to the presentation. And I'll show you later on another uh, a demo, which is more on the, um, on the back end part to explain how, how you configure such a system uh, from uh, the back end perspective. So just to summarize what we just uh, saw, you can see it over here. We have this device that sent MQTT data packets to the cloud. In the cloud, there was a listener that actually sent the data directly to the other uh, people that were subscribing to this listener, to this broker, sorry. Uh, and there are the listeners here, uh, the manufacturer portal, the one that is managed by the device manufacturer and the organizational portal. And that's what enabled us to see the data coming in and flowing in from the device to the uh, uh, display. And at the same time, it's being stored over here for further processing and analysis. Uh, you can run here later on different algorithms um, as you wish um, uh, and as you develop them throughout uh, the life cycle of the product. Uh, and, and the benefits of, of this approach here uh, versus, for example, edge computing that was discussed earlier, that this device can be very simple. 
there is no security breaches or, or potential breaches because there is no almost no hardware or software on, on that device. Everything is being sent in the raw format to the cloud, and only there it's being processed. Uh, the disadvantages is that once this is disconnected, then there is no reading. So I cannot actually understand what's going on uh, from vital science perspective uh, with the patient. Okay. So now uh, a step back uh, and talking about uh, why we need to build a connected care platform for medical devices and what are the challenges that we are facing once we do that. Uh, what's the difference between having a medical device for acute care at hospitals versus one that sits at home or remotely? So today, most of the medical devices are, are being developed and designed for uh, professionals to manage. If it's a CT or ultrasound or, or, any, or, or infusion pumps, they're basically being uh, used by either nurses or technicians uh, that know how to operate it. Once you move to the home environment and you now want to have remote uh, patient, not only monitoring, but uh, also uh, care, then uh, those devices need to be managed and, and, and operated either by the patient or by someone close to the patient, which are not professionals. And that's not easy. And you need to make sure that they know how to use it and also how to adhere correctly to the treatment so it will be efficient. And, and this is a, a one big dilemma. Um, and uh, the second dilemma is that once you start sending data to the cloud and, and to, you want to interconnect with those patients uh, bidirectionally, you are now opening yourself and exposing yourself to different uh, threats and different challenges that you were not uh, exposed to before. So we split it into two different type of challenges. The first one is more on the infrastructure level, and this relates to the cybersecurity threats, how you manage cybersecurity uh, for uh, medical devices when they are connected from remotely. Uh, how you uh, scale it up uh, when you are having one device at the hospital, it works autonomously. But now when you have tens of thousands of devices at home, uh, the issue of managing them and scaling up is quite uh, uh, challenging. Of course, all the issue of privacy, how you make sure that the data of the patient is being anonymized, uh, it's not being tempered, it's being uh, uh, kept under the regulations either here, which is HIPAA, or in Europe, which is GDPR. So all of those are challenges that normally medical device companies uh, didn't face before. Because again, once you build a standalone solution, you don't have any cybersecurity threats or very minimal ones. And you don't have privacy issues uh, because you don't store anything on, on the device in most cases. Uh, definitely not patient information, uh, et cetera. And, and the second challenge, which I also mentioned earlier, is around the, use, the usage of the device at a remote environment. How you make sure that the patient actually adheres to the treatment that he uses the device in, the, in a proper way um, and that the data is being sent uh, correctly to the caregiver, how you don't overburden the caregiver. Now that he needs to monitor at the same time uh, hundreds of patients, uh, it, it's a different story. So how you build in uh, different algorithms and, and alerts and, and rules into the system that will only extract the relevant data uh, that uh, will not uh, overburden him. And of course, making sure that the platform also supports the new um, um, uh, models of reimbursements which when it comes to remote patient monitoring and also introduce new uh, uh, capabilities uh, and, and new features like uh, you can now go to paper use capabilities because you know exactly when the device is being used and by whom so you can now not just sell the device uh, at one time but you can work in subscription models and etc Okay, so how do you architect a, a complete solution? Again, we can't cover everything in, in, in 45 minutes, so I'll focus mainly on the connectivity part and, and how you connect the device itself uh, to the cloud and, and, and on those aspects, uh, but there are many others as well. And I'll uh, start by first understanding the value chain and how everything is interoperating and connecting uh, together. So basically we have from one side the patient uh, that is using the medical device. Uh, it can be either directly like this one or through a gateway like this one. Uh, we have the medical device company itself, and over there you have several stakeholders that are really interested in what's going on with the device. It's both the product and R&D teams uh, that need to make sure that uh, uh, the product provides the value and is operating in the right way uh, that they designed it uh, to work. Uh, it's the different uh, uh, support teams that needs to make sure that the, the, the system, the, the product is operating uh, and working well. 
Uh, and of course, uh, the new uh, capabilities and features and opportunities here uh, that are mainly around AI and machine learning and, and uh, um, uh, deep uh, analysis, and this is mainly by the data scientists, how you can now take all the mass amounts of data that for the first time the medical device company has access to and create out of it uh, uh, insights and uh, uh, meaningful uh, actions. And of course, on the right side, we have the clinician, the caregiver that needs to get the data and operate uh, according to the readings from the device itself. So basically, once you connect everything together, you're getting into a unique situation for, where for the first time, the medical device company has access, direct access in real time and an ongoing access to both the patient and the caregiver. And from that, you can learn a lot and um, uh, create a lot of value. And this is what normally happens with most of our customers. They can actually now uh, collect information about uh, what's going on with different patients and now run a query. Okay, I want to know, uh, give me all the uh, pregnant women in the uh, third trimester that suffered from uh, headaches. And, and you get it, all of the information instantly and you can act upon it uh, instantly. Um, and, and, and the values, of course, are, are endless when you are having a connected care uh, solution. Okay, so moving to the dilemmas themselves. So it started in the previous session talking about edge computing. Where do you actually do the processing? Are you doing it on the cloud side or on the gateway side or on the front end side, on the device side? There are pros and cons for each. If you do it on the cloud side, of course, you get, you, you get uh, the benefits of the cloud uh, where you can actually protect your IP. Uh, if you're running some algorithms on this device and someone steals this device and can do reverse engineering, if you have some important IP on that, you are uh, exposed. But once you do all the algorithmics, uh, for example, uh, the respiration rate or uh, doing a biometrics uh, identity uh, on, on the, from the device, then all the IP sits in the cloud and it's more difficult to uh, hack it and, and, and get this IP. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's much more difficult rather than having it you know, uh, installed in hundreds of, or thousands of places uh, at the edges. Um, and, and, and that goes also to the issue of pri pri uh, data privacy. Once all the data is, 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 is uh, in a single place, it's much more easier to uh, protect it and make sure that it's complying with all the regulations. Of course, also from a total cost of ownership, it's much easier to manage and, and, and uh, handle everything in a single location rather than in multiple locations. Uh, once you work on the cloud, you have high availability and durability. Uh, you have uh, uh, backup servers and so on, so the uh, mission is much easier to maintain. We have systems that are working uh, for five years already with zero, zero downtime, practically zero, even not one second. And this is something that the cloud can provide you, which normal uh, deployments in the, in the field cannot do. Um, however, there are limitations to working uh, only with the cloud. For example, what happens if you are in an offline situation? When you don't have access from the device to the cloud, what do you do with the patient? Let's say if he's a diabetic uh, patient, then, then you know, he needs to get the treatment. He needs to get you know, the, 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 the um, uh, notification that uh, his, his blood, uh, his, his sugar levels are, are high. And if you're doing all the processing on the cloud, that will not work. So um, you can only do it on the front end side. Uh, another point is what if you need to act in real time? Uh, let's say you are doing now an operation, a surgery, uh, you need to uh, move um, a, 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 a something inside the body based on a camera that you're looking at. If you won't have the real-time capability, then you won't be able to operate uh, properly. And last point is how much data you need to process. Uh, if it's uh, just telemetry coming from this device, for example, which is maximum one kilobyte per second, which, uh, which is actually much less, then the costs are minimal. It's a couple of cents per month. But if you, don't, if you need to send video, for example, or images, then it's a different story. You cannot send all the raw data uh, uh, to the cloud. It will be very, very expensive and, and probably uh, not efficient. So basically, once you're, when you're actually designing your product and you're deciding uh, in which mode to work, if it's more on processing on the cloud side versus on the gateway side, uh, these are the, the uh, items you need to uh, look at and, and decide uh, uh, upon. Uh, and in, in many cases, you will do some kind of a combination. You will have uh, uh, an hybrid approach where some of the data will be processed on, on the device uh, and the rest will be processed on, on the cloud. Second uh, dilemma is 
where is the IoT gateway? You need to somehow to, for someone to manage the data coming from the device, and it can be in, in several places. It can be in the device itself, so here the gateway is uh, actually, it can be inside of the device. It can be a mobile phone that will act as a gateway, um, and it can be uh, on the cloud itself. Uh, the uh, uh, reason again here also for choosing uh, how to operate with the, with the gateway are based on the costs. If you want to reduce costs, you would like to have a centralized gateway and not a gateway in each and every device. It relates on ease of use and, and the ability to adhere. Uh, so again, we gave some examples to that uh, earlier. Uh, and uh, it relates also to issues like uh, energy levels. For example, if you want to have uh, an implant that needs to work now half a year without being charged, you cannot put the gateway inside of the implant uh, because it will uh, uh, dry the battery in a couple of hours rather than in, in a couple of months. So it really depends on what type of uh, product you are building. For uh, wearables, uh, you would like to have a, a, a lifetime of, uh, or um, uptime of, of a product for, uh, for a couple of days uh, without recharging. For an implant, it should be even years. Uh, and if it's a stationary, you don't care. You can actually plug it into the power, like I did over here, and then you can put whatever you want on the stationary uh, device, as long, again, as the costs are uh, making sense, uh, etc. cetera. Um, so basically, um, normally what we see in general from, from our experience so far, when we are talking about wearables, normally the, the gateway will be the phone. Why? Because when a person goes with his wearable, he also takes the phone with him, and the phone is, is, is quite an extensive uh, processing unit, so you can actually use it to do all the gateway work, and even more processing on top of the gateway itself. Um, and when you're talking about stationary devices, normally they will either have the gateway internally and connected directly to the cloud, um, or they will use an external gateway uh, that uh, is, is reside, residing somewhere in, in, in the parameters of the uh, uh, device itself. Next, it's what type of um, technology to use. And, 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 and that's uh, one of the biggest questions we are uh, uh, getting all the time. Should I use Wi-Fi? Should I use BLE? Should I use NFC? Should I use uh, 4G, 5G, um, uh, LoRa, different type of uh, uh, transmission protocols? physical air protocols that are sending the data from the device eventually uh, forward, either to the gateway or to the cloud. And, and, and basically, um, there is no, again, clear cut or clear answer over here. Um, normally, again, when it's a wearable, something on the body, uh, BLE is the most uh, attractive option, uh, both from a power consumption point of view and from configuration point of view. It's very easy to uh, uh, sync the devices b based on BLE. Uh, less, by the way, uh, with NFC, more easier with BLE. Um, and it also gives you a range of 10 meters, so it's quite comfortable. You can leave the phone somewhere in the room. You don't need to carry it with you all the time, so it's, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and again, here, NFC less. Uh, and um, when it's a stationary device, then um, you have two options normally. It's either Wi-Fi or cellular. Um, Wi-Fi is, is, is cheaper, of course. Um, uh, but has, uh, uh, has the limitation, of get, again, of uh, uh, area coverage. Uh, and uh, uh, in, case of the, in case of a device is stationary, then it, it's less of a problem. But if you think about a hospital environment, uh, you need to now connect to the Wi-Fi of the hospital. You need to talk with the IT people of the hospital. That's uh, quite a challenging uh, task. So uh, doing it with 4G or 5G will actually enable you to overcome this barrier and, and uh, have the data connected directly to you without uh, having the IT people of the hospital uh, involved. But you will have to carry, uh, bear more costs regarding the usage of the uh, 5G uh, or 4G network. Um, so also here, it's really a matter of uh, uh, what type of product you are developing. If is, is it going to be uh, used by uh, hospital patients directly? And whether it's a stationary or wearable device, um, these are all important uh, uh, items. Last uh, um, dilemma that I'm going to uh, talk about is how to manage offline scenarios. Offline will happen some, in some way or another, either because uh, um, 
uh, an unexpected uh, fault of the user normally that you know the device will not be connected he will uh, not operate the uh, application uh, properly and so on um, and it can be also expected let's say that you have a device that uh, you know that is going to get into operation room and in the operation room there is no network connectivity so you need to make sure that you can uh, actually uh, later on uh, take all the data that was collected during the offline mode and uh, upload it later on uh, to the cloud. Um, and same goes if the device is actually in the factory and other places, not always you have all the uh, abilities to connect directly to the cloud. So you have different situations uh, that you need to handle and mitigating the offline dilemmas you normally do by deciding whether you want to handle offline or not. Uh, and if you care about offline, then what kind of uh, processing and storage you need to put in in order to make sure that in, in a situation of offline, uh, you can continue and, and operate uh, until the online comes back. Okay. So now we are moving to the second part of the demo. Uh, and here I want to show you how easy is it uh, once you're using an off-the-shelf platform for medical device uh, connectivity, uh, how is it to connect a medical device to the cloud and uh, eventually create this uh, type of uh, bi-directional communication between the, uh, or three-directional communication between the caregiver, the uh, medical device company, and the patient itself. So um, I prepared a short video uh, of uh, the system. So. We are starting with the BioT console that introduces for the first time a no-code approach popular in the consumer IoT market to the regulated medical device space. For this demo, we have chosen two devices, a heart rate device and a blood pressure monitoring device. Templates are the key concept of the BioT console. They describe what a device is, what a caregiver is, and what a patient is, as well as other system entities. In this demo, we already defined two types of specific devices, one is the heart rate wristband and the other is the blood pressure cuff. Let's look at the model of the heart rate wristband. Here you can see the general details like, for example, the name of the template. In the Detail field tab, you can see the basic parameters of the device. In the BioT module, built-in attributes come out of the box, so you can see things like serial number, time zone, the organization the device belongs to, etc. The status fields show you parameters that the BioT backend expects the device to report. For example, the firmware version. It is very easy to remove or add attributes to suit any device. For example, if your device does not give you the firmware version, simply click on the trash can icon. You can also see that we added an attribute that relates specifically to the heart rate wristband device. This is the battery level, which the device reports. You can also see that we defined it is a numeric attribute and added a validation rule stating that the values should be between 0 and 100. In case of readings outside a valid range, BioT will report the manufacturer that the device is faulty. Now let's take a look at the patient template. In the detail field, in addition to the built-in fields like first name, we also define custom fields for the background conditions with a few options. In the measurement field, you can easily define what measures you want to track in the patient. In this demo, we defined heart rate and blood pressure. Note that for a numeric measurement, in addition to the valid range, you can also define a normal measurement range. Now, after we set the data model using the BioT console, it generated two portals. One is the manufacturing portal, and the other is the organization portal. The manufacturer portal enables the medical device company to manage the device fleets across the different health organizations they support. The organization portal allows healthcare professionals and the administrative staff of the care provider to manage the remote care operation. Let's start with the manufacturer portal. For the purpose of this demo, we have three organizations. For organization number one, you can see that eight devices were sold and they are being used by four patients. If we need to add new customer, we can simply do so by pressing the button and fill in the details of the organization. Consider this as the cockpit that supports your devices and customers. Let's now move on to the organization portal. As you can see, we are logged in to the organization portal as Dr. Fisher, whom we created using the clinician template. This user belongs to demo org one, and Dr. Fisher has access to eight devices that belong to his four patients. You can see that each patient is using two devices, 
the wristband and the blood pressure cuff. Furthermore, the list of devices includes built-in attribute such as the serial number and the battery level custom attribute which we added. Now let's switch to the caregivers tab. Here you can see Dr. Fisher and his colleague. And now let's move to the patient tab. I would like to point out another custom attribute we added, which is the background conditions. We see a preview on the patient with some more attributes. Note that for each view of the system entity, such as patient, using the BioT console, you can define what attributes you want to be displayed. For example, we chose to display background condition as one of the columns in the table view of the patient, whereas in the preview, we chose to display the phone number. Now let's take a quick look at Danny. All the fields that you see here related to Danny were generated by the BioT console. We are set to go. Once all the required information is in place, we can start using the medical devices. Let's see how it works. The Mio uses a sensor to monitor my heartbeat. The data from the device is transmitted to the application. To show you how Dr. Fisher can monitor me remotely, I will go to the measurement tab. As you can see, only one device is active, so we are getting the readings of the heart rate, but not of the blood pressure cuff. Now let's also take a look at the past measurements. The historical data stored in the cloud can be accessed here. The historical data graph is static, but you can choose the sample period that, to get the exact information you're looking for. So let's select a range of one day. The live measurement I just took and some old measurements from last night when I was jogging are displayed. You can also see the blood pressure measurement I took last night. Okay, so, so the point was to show you that you don't need to know any kind of uh, coding language in order to build a connected care platform. You can actually do everything through the templates. You can define all the parameters. Each device, medical device, has different parameters. It can be blood pressure, it can be uh, uh, um, um, oxygen level, or anything else. Uh, and the idea is to be able to define all the entities that you need in the system. It can be the medical device itself and its parameters, and it can be the uh, uh, organization levels and, and the users uh, through that uh, templates. Uh, and we call it, of course, no-code approach. Uh, and um, basically, it enables you to create, at the end of the day, uh, uh, a system that in, sh sh shares data between patients, medical device companies, and clinicians. Uh, and of course, uh, on top of that, you can define and, and implement different algorithms uh, as you choose to. Um, one more important thing I want to uh, stress, uh, just to make sure that we are clear, this is the cloud environment of the medical device company. Uh, it's not the cloud environment of the healthcare provider. You still have here another cloud that is normally managed by the healthcare provider, and all of, all of what you do is having an API to transmit data from this cloud environment to the care provider and also enrich data coming from the care provider to our environment. Um, and at the same time, you can work directly with the clinicians either through the BioT portal or through APIs and send the data to the existing portals that they're already using. So just to open a bit the, the hood and see what's beneath it, there are a lot of uh, microservices and code that is running uh, beneath BioT to enable connected care platform. Most of it, or 90% of it, is running in the backend part. These are different microservices that are managing the different things that you just, uh, 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 I just presented. Uh, and each one uh, handles a different topic. For just example, things like uh, user consent and user management and organization management and the support of multi-regions because sometimes you need to support, again, the HIPAA in the US and in other cases you need to support the local uh, German law. Uh, so implementations are being done differently. You have the telemetry modules and, and so on and so forth. And of course, on the device side, you have the uh, different uh, software development kits that we are providing to interact in more easily uh, manner with the backend. And same goes for the side of the uh, doctor uh, and the caregiver. Uh, the platform is agnostic to the cloud itself. It can be either uh, Azure or, micro, uh, or uh, Google or uh, AWS, or it can be an on-prem uh, cloud. And um, basically, this is an example of a deployment. So what you can see over here is the medical device that co is connected either directly or through a gateway uh, to the cloud. In the cloud, you have different uh, services that are running. In this case, it's an AWS cloud account. 
so we are using the S3, which is a, so is a storage uh, 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 service, and we are using uh, a TimeStream DB, which is a, a new Amazon uh, database uh, uh, service that they are providing. And in this case, you can also see here uh, a redundant configuration. You have everything uh, set up twice to make sure that you have uh, high availability. So this is eventually how the architecture looks like at the end of the day. So just to summarize uh, everything, once we are going to Internet of Medical Things, uh, you, you, you can introduce new use cases uh, to the medical device, it's starting from remote patient monitoring. It uh, continues with features like uh, increased patient adherence, uh, persistent and compliance. For example, if I know that uh, a patient needs to take a medication at a certain point of time and he is not doing it or doing a treatment, sorry, then uh, I can send an alert uh, to remind him. Uh, it's to promote the proper use and safe use of the devices uh, in case you identify something wrong with them. And of course, remote device maintenance uh, and uh, real world data research. So many new things that are uh, being opened uh, to you once you're going to uh, Internet of Medical Things. Uh, and last but not least, of course, is the uh, financial business model. So you can now uh, enable reimbursement for remote patient monitoring, and you can introduce new billing methods, as I mentioned earlier, like uh, pay-per-use uh, concepts. And you can do all of that uh, in a matter of months. So basically, with the platform, you can do it in uh, less than two months. Uh, rather than if you need to develop everything on your own. So it depends where you stand in, in the cycle. If you don't have any resources that understand IoT and security and privacy and, and cloud, you need to recruit them first and uh, then uh, scope the, uh, the, the solution and, and, and plan it and, and, and design it. So that can take up to uh, uh, at least a year and a half. Uh, it really depends on, on, on how uh, uh, prepared you are to start. Uh, and sometimes it can also take three years. So using a platform, of course, saves you a lot of time, efforts, uh, and, and risks. Uh, so up to 80% of your time to market, up to five times uh, cost of the operational ongoing costs, because uh, you don't need to care about uh, updates of security and, and privacy uh, compliances issues. Uh, you don't need to uh, care about uh, cloud optimization issues. It's all being done as part of the uh, uh, use of the platform. Uh, of course, uh, you, you don't take any liability from cybersecurity or privacy, uh, and you enjoy the patient engagement workflows that uh, exist with such, such a system. That's it, in a nutshell.